Well, welcome to another year of Archer's Choice. And Vicki, we've been saying that for about 15 years. Yeah, this is our 15th season oh on the Outdoor Channel. It's God. crazy. It's been crazy, but you know, we can't thank you enough. I mean, it's been no. a blast. No, and honestly, I mean, like, for the 15 years, I mean, we've always had Lucky Logo, and we want to thank our manufacturers, our sponsors, for participating and helping and us. And they're still participating. And they're still participating. So this week's Lucky Logo is a marathon. The ultimate in ground blinds. I mean, Bottom 15 line, years of so doing this. Like really this cool is craziness, stuff. you know? I mean, that's a long time. It has been. We've been married for 22 years, so 15 of the 20. Yeah, Dang. Yeah, ball and chain. Wow, it's Holy hurt cow, my back, my depressing. neck. It's like made me shorter. Yeah. yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. Yeah, okay. This week, though, we're going to go hunt deer. Hunt what do deer. You, think? you know, and, and what's funny in today's world of, of outdoor television yeah. is it's like when someone grabs that grunt call, and the deer comes it's running instant in. instant gratification. Rattling horns, they come running in. It doesn't happen like No that. matter where they go, no matter what they do, it's always about, you know, shooting all the deer. Right. The reality of it is that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen, but you only get to watch a certain amount of footage every week on a show. But we're going to go into some real deer hunting. Real deer. We've got two Real weeks. ups. Yep. And real downs. Yep, we have two weeks of it. Illinois and Iowa, Ralph and Vicki hunting deer. <laughs> the real deer season. Check it out. Food plots, you know, it's a funny thing. I think what we have found is you, you reap what you sow. The more effort you put forth in doing soil samples, you know, going to the office and, and finding out, you know, what type of soil you have, what it lacks, and actually spending the dollars and turning a, a piece of property into a, a phenomenal wildlife habitat. Food plots aren't easy. Don't kid yourself. To be more successful in your food plots, either talk to a landowner or a farmer that has a tractor. You know, we use our woods equipment all the time, whether it's our tiller, our cedar. There's a process, testing your soil, making a strategic plan, talking to somebody on what to plant, where to plant it, why to plant it, creating a better habitat, a better food source, and strategically putting this in areas that could make you more successful in your hunting. One of the major things that we like to do with our food plots is we basically make a late season food plot. Because in early season, you have the cornfields and the beans and everything else out there, where come late season, some of that may not be up any longer, and you're gonna need something that's gonna draw those deer into the area where you wanna hunt, somewhere close to their bedding area, but somewhere that they can still go ahead and get what they want. Well, Vicki, you're spot on. I mean, you know, we living in the Midwest and, and you cannot compete with the ag. I mean, you're talking thousands and thousands of acres of corn and soybean, and, and I mean, fertilized, I mean, greatest crop out there. But what, what you have to understand is you focus in on that late season when all those crops are down. So now you have a food source that not only is for hunting, but also to help your deer herd and your wildlife get through that rough time of the year. So we put our food sources close to winter bedding areas because those bedding areas do change. We've seen it year after year. Well, it is October 29th, and it's my first day that I'm gonna go sit out here by home in Illinois and see what can happen. Ralph's gonna stay home, play Mr. Mom with RJ for the afternoon, and um, we'll see what happens. It's always exciting when whitetail season begins, and you know, we're at home, and yeah, it's not October 1st, it's a little bit later, because we were other places earlier, and it always takes me a little bit longer to kind of rearrange my backpack, because I always forget something the first few times I go out. They are combining the corn to the northwest of us, and in our food plot here, as you can see where they've actually sat, Actually, there's some beds out there, but you can see where they've eaten, which is actually going to make it really a lot easier for me to go ahead and range right now to find out some yardage, some, for some shots in case you know, when the deer come by. That should work. I brought my face mask and I have no camo paint. I never put it face paint in my bag. This is what happens when, you know, you start hunting whitetails and you forget everything. Even if Josh, the camera guy, is trying to hand me some Hunter Specialties face paint, it's not mine, I can't use it. 
Nothing too terribly exciting happened that first afternoon, but it was really good to just get out in the woods here at home in Illinois. If you go ahead and you try to do a little bit of rattling sequence, you never really know if they're going to respond or not. Heck, sometimes you can have one come flying in at you, and other times you can rattle. Like the example is we had this buck within our eyesight, and I rattled, and he didn't care. Of course, he had a doe with him, but he didn't care, and I'm sure he could probably hear that rattle. He's just not hearing me. He's a doe. Dang, there they go back into the timber. He's huge, he's beautiful. At that point, we didn't even have a trail camera picture of him. Ralph had actually seen brand new rubs going on behind where, we're, where we were hunting, and he says, Vic, he goes, the stand over there in the corner, that's when you need to go in because there's a brand new fresh rub line out there. Little did we know that this big 10 was back there. check a bunch of our trail cameras, and then we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do tonight. Wide open scrape, look at the rubble. You know, there, there's something about walking into the timber and there's a fresh rub. Also, or there's like a it's like glowing, it glows, it's, it's, you know? It's like, <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there it is, and I mean, all of a sudden that adrenaline starts rushing through And you through start your looking around, you try to figure out where he came from, which way was he going? Most people squat down to look, you know, if there's another rub. Right. I don't have to, I just look straight and yeah, I can see the rub line. Being, yeah, it is, you know, it really is. Vertically it's, challenged. One of the best things is about just walking out there, even if it's just, you know, the very beginning of season and getting out there and just starting to see, like, the woods come alive with deer sign. You know, and, and I think that that's the thing that's that little, pump of adrenaline. This is this is it. This is the driving point that, you know, all of a sudden says, hey, you need to sit here. Right. It's early November. Josh and I just got in our stand here in Iowa. This morning we drove around. We saw a couple. We saw one nice deer. We got some standing beans down in our field. And it's not like the bucks are coming for the feed. The rut is on. It is prime time. And in one of our favorite spots. We'll see what happens. Now, Vicki, she's back home. She's sitting in the stand. She saw a monster last night. So, hopefully, maybe they can get on that. We'll see.
My mother, who's well in her upper 70s, is still hunting. Now that is what it's all about. Hello? Hello? Hi, Ralph. We got it. Oh, my goodness, the blood that was there. So it was good, but what happened is she had moved on me like she was broadside, but then, like, went down, and the shot was, like, low, but it really went in. Awesome. Oh, I'm so thankful. Con I'm so thankful. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. We're so proud of you, Nani. That's awesome. Thank you. I said after all these years, I keep trying, trying, trying. I'm going to tell you something. That is what it's about. It's not about the measurement. It's not about the width, the score. It, I mean, it's it's none of that. It is about sharing the outdoors with your family. And my mom, who is in her mid to late 70s, is still out there and she's hunting with a 10 point crossbow and she just shot probably it's her i don't even know how many deer she shot doesn't matter but she's out there still I think with more and more people actually doing research on white-tailed deer, we're starting to understand like CWD, EHD, and all of the diseases. It's totally an emotional roller coaster when you know this is near your area or it's going to hit your area. Right, and one of the things is all spring and summer, you're getting your trail camera, you're getting your spy point pictures, your trail camera photos of these beautiful bucks in velvet, and then you know you're thinking this is going to be a great season for us. And then all of a sudden, you maybe you go walking past a stream or by a pond, and you find that that deer dead. Look at him. EHD, blue tongue. As soon as we crawled down here, you could smell him. How horrible! What a horrible way to die. I think panic hits you immediately, thinking, "Oh my gosh, all of this work, all this time, all this money invested, and not only that, but the animals. The animals." don't have a clue and all of a sudden the next thing you know is all your mature game is wiped out. Shoot, that's why he's not seen any of the big deer. You can't plan for it. I mean if it hits your area it hits your area. The best thing that you can do is still continue your management, continue your food plots, trying to give the best habitat for not only your white-tailed deer but all of the wildlife. If it hits, just know that next few years could be really rough. I think the bottom line here is God does things that we don't understand. Our best thing to do is just go with the flow. Well, the temperature dropped here about 30 degrees in a day. Yesterday it was much warmer out. Today it is freezing cold and super windy. We've had crazy winds all week, but now the temperature's dropped. 
melt out in Iowa. And I think they're probably 10 degrees even colder than we are here. So I wonder what he's doing. I know that I'm freezing. And I'm gonna get blown out of this tree if I'm not careful. I'm attached, but, but, but I hate cold weather. was the grass behind her head. Unbelievable because right now, all the highest of high and the lowest of low, the extremes of everything that deer right. season or elk season or bear or moose or whatever comes into play every time you hunt. It does, you always have your highs, you have your lows, and you know what, if you're not in the right place at the right time, it just doesn't happen. You can put all the odds in your favor. You can do out the food plots, figure out your trails, put up your tree stands, your ground blinds, everything where you think they need to be, throw out your trail, you know, your, your spy point, throw everything out there. But if it's not gonna happen, it's just not gonna happen. The more time you spend out in the woods, the better chance you have. Well, the other thing too is, you know, I think we all get to a certain point in, in our hunting that it's not about just going out and shooting a deer and tagging right. it and going to the next state. It's, we, it's, it's about enjoying everything about it. Right. You, know, so, you, you know what I mean? Is, yep. is sometimes you, know, you, you see a deer maybe on, on your camera, your trail camera, and you're like, I'm after him. Right. Like you and or I one might just show up in the timber one day that, that you've no, never seen you and never the rest a of the season, of you go ahead and try for him. So, so I, I mean, the, the fun is, and I, we want everyone not to lose this. It's called hunt. The hunt. And enjoy Hunting. all of God's creation. Absolutely. This week's lucky logo was a marrow step. The ultimate ground blinds, tree stands, all kinds of cool okay. hunting gear. And that's if you happen to see 30, 15 years and he's still really, doing this. Really, really, okay. I really like it. Archerschoice.com, click on the lucky logo, fill out some information, and someone's going to win some great stuff from Maristep, as well as more about other manufacturers. Thanks for watching this week's Archer's Choice. We'll see you next week, same time. Same, 15 years, and she's still I'm like, losing it. <laughs> same channel, right here. On, on the, the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice. Well, Call Archer's just, Choice. I'm just 15 years. That. You talk about me rambling. How about you? 15 I'm years of saying happy. the same thing, the end, the close, and I'm you just happy screwed that it up. I'm just happy here for my 15 years. Thank you, honey. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>